In this presentation, we will take a look at accounting methods which will relate to and depend on ownership and control. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Accounting related to ownership and control. Method used to account for investments in common stock will depend on the extent of influence or control the investor can exercise over the investee. So in other words, we're going to have different methods depending on the level of control. Now, if we're going to use different methods, we need to have some kind of definition. We need to have some lines in terms of when we're going to apply these different methods. What does it mean to have different levels of control? And then how do we apply those in practice so we can have some kind of standardization for that? Typically, we're going to draw those lines generally with the amount of ownership. And then there might be exceptions uh, in certain cases to those lines uh, in certain cases. So, for example, we're going to say 0 to 20%, 20 to 50%, 51% to 100 percent so let's start off with zero to 20 percent this is what you would think of more similarly to like if you're like a normal investor if you were to invest just individually in the stock market in something like apple you're buying apple stock well clearly you have some ownership because you own the stock but you don't really feel like an owner at that case and <laughs> you're kind of your your vote doesn't feel like you have a whole lot of control there because uh, you don't right your vote is very small compared to the to the overall vote but once this percentage gets higher and then at some point you're going to say, hey, they, this person's got kind of control now. They own a significant amount of voting share of the stock. Well, where is that line? Uh, well, we kind of drew an arbitrary line there. <laughs> so it's kind of an arbitrary number. We're going to say 20%. We're going to say, okay, so in the case of one company owning another company, if one company owns more than 20%, we're going to now say, well, they don't have a controlling interest, which we're going to say is a, over 51%, but they have significant influence at that point in time. We're going to say that this has become a significant factor so from zero to 20 percent in general this is more of a sh more of a fuzzy line so there could be other circumstances that take place here that would uh insta would would cause significant influence or not but in general we're going to say if it was over 20 percent significant influence so under 20 percent we're going to use the carried value uh so the 20 percent threshold to determine significant influence uh it could change depending on the situation so in other words this is more of a kind of like a fuzzy line but that's the general rule whereas this line of 51 percent is you would think is applying more often that's more of a concrete rule because obviously if someone has more than 50 percent of the vote on anything they they have kind of a controlling vote right there it's not much question about that generally so then if you're over that 20 percent line 20 percent to 50 percent then we're going to be using the equity method because you have significant influence. So the idea there is that uh, then you're over the 20%. So you have the influence. You're not over. You're not above the 51%. So you don't have complete control. In other words, uh, someone else could at least tie you on the vote if you're at 50. You know, you're pretty close to 50. The, the whole everybody else could at least tie you. But you have a lot of influence if you're basically uh, have 50%. If you have 51%, and you're voting on something then you win right and so that would be a, a pretty hard line if you're 51 and above in most cases that you would say all right now you have control so we're using the equity method from 20 to 50 because there's significant influence we had that significant influence then if you're at 51 if you if you cross that line to 51 percent of ownership well now you basically have control you can you can vote for the board of, you can vote for you know the management and whatnot and you should be able to to exercise control at that point so so in that point we can use the carried at cost with consolidation or equity method so we might have a consolidation process that would be uh would be appropriate in this uh, situation because we have the controlling interest so lines zero to twenty percent carried value you can think of that kind of like you would normally just account for stocks as if you have more of a passive investment you don't have a lot of influence but when you get closer to the 20 that's more of a fuzzy line you're starting to have influence therefore we're going to change the method uh, to reflect that which is going to be an equity method that's from that kind of fuzzy line of 20 to 50 and then the 51 which is a pretty hard line that basically says hey now you've got control and you may need a consolidation here to to reflect that at this point in time meaning having financial statements combined together in essence and be reflect reflected showing consolidated financial statements okay 
So securities carried at fair value, what does that mean? So this is going to be the, the category that's going to be from uh, 0 to 20%. We don't have significant influence. We don't have control. So when neither the equity method nor the consolidation are appropriate, securities are carried at the fair value. So if you're just normally kind of investing, if, you're, if you have some investment that would be a typical kind of investor for most people type of investors or companies that are, are investing into stocks and it's not doing so to basically have significant influence, then you would be using uh, the carried at fair value. Then the equity method, when investor has significant influence over operating and financial policies of the investee and consolidation is not appropriate, then generally used when a, a company has 20% or over of the second company's common stock. So that's going to be the equity method. Here, when we're thinking about the advanced accounting, we're concentrating more on basically equity and, and uh, the upper or the consolidated financial statements. So we're concentrating here on, on the factors. Okay, when are we going to use the equity method and when are we going to be using the uh, consolidation and then we're going to be jumping in of course to what do, what kind of what does a consolidation look like in different kind of scenarios that's going to be where our focus will typically be here so generally use so the equity method the mid-range generally used when a company has 20 percent or over of a second company's common stock again that's kind of the fuzzy more of a fuzzy line and more of a arbitrary line that they had to draw somewhere the investment is reported as a line on the investor's balance sheet so it's going to be reported as basically a line item. The income recognized from the investee is reported as a line on the investor's income statement. So in other words, the, the investor now, the, the person that's owning the significant influence, the over 20% influence in the investee is now not just going to wait till basically dividends happen in order to record dividend income. As, as we would do if we were more of a, a passive investor that doesn't have the significant influence, but rather think about the actual income that is, is generated from the investee, the one that we're investing in, that we have more than 20% ownership in, and report on a line item on the income statement the, the amount of our portion, in essence, of the income that's being generated from the company that we have a significant over 20% usually ownership in. Consolidation combining financial reporting of the individual assets, liabilities, revenue, and expenses of two or more companies as though they were a single entity. So this would be over the 51%. You're thinking the consolidation process might be appropriate with regards to someone that has control over the 51%. Generally used in a parent-subsidiary relationship where the parent company controls the subsidiary company. So in that kind of situation, when you're looking at a consolidation, you're saying, hey, look, there's a parent subsidiary relationship. One company has control of the other company. That typically happens over that 51% threshold. You would typically think and that's more of a hard line because you're saying, okay, they own 51%. Maybe, I mean, they clearly can influence, you know, completely in a, in a voting situation. What will happen when, if a vote were to take place in that situation? And in that situation, you might have the consolidation set up, two sets of book, two separate entities, but one basically having control over the other, therefore it being appropriate possibly for them to be reported as though they were one entity. So you would think generally in the case of that controlling interest, you would have that consolidation process. However, you could have a situation where you have an unconsolidated unconsolid subsidiary. So now you got a subsidiary, there's a control uh, interest. However, it's unconsolidated. In that case, a subsidiary that is, that is not consolidated with the parent that's what an unconsolidated subsidiary will be. It's going to be shown as an investment on the parent's balance sheet. 